my name is Sinead Finnegan and I'm a current DCU student and staff with DCU Educational Trust. I'm delighted that DCU alum and current Director of Communications with the GAA, Alan Milton, has joined us for the latest episode of DCU Alumni Voices. Alan, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us here today. You're very welcome, Sinead. It's great, great to speak to you. How are you, first of all? Oh, good. Coping with this new dispensation, I suppose, the new normal. It's been, uh, it's been a very strange time, as you can imagine. Month of May is normally things are really cranking up uh, for championship and not just in work with the GA, but at home with, with the club. It gets really, really busy and uh, we've all missed that. But I suppose everybody's health and, and well-being is, is of uppermost in our thoughts. And I think we've all got used to it at this stage. It's dragged on a little bit longer than we'd like. But hopefully, I think people are starting to get really hopeful. But we, we need to see it out and we need to finish, finish it through. And, and, and keep the national effort uh, going that, so we can all return to whatever the new normal might look like. Absolutely. Um, so as I mentioned there in the intro, you are the Director of Communications with the GAA. Sounds very, very fancy. Um, so firstly, for people who wouldn't have an insight into the wonderful world of communications, could you just give us a little insight into what your role would have looked like pre-COVID times? I suppose the department, uh, the communications department at Croke Park is responsible for everything communications related for the GAA at national level. Uh, we have a small team of eight people, um, but we rely heavily on a team of volunteers. There's 32 county PROs and we have 1,450 club PROs around the country, not to mention the 450 abroad. So, you know, it's, it's a wide and diverse team in that regard. Um, we are charged with all the publications the GA do, our online presence, whether it be through social and digital, uh, and all the usual stuff that goes with media engagement and speech writing and uh, messaging in general around Congress. So it's a busy, busy station, but a really privileged position to have and lucky to work where I do. I grew up in Gaelic games and when Croke Park comes calling, um, you know, you, you jump at the opportunity. At least that's that's how I viewed it when the chance came along. I was a journalist in print media for uh, over 10 years. And um, so lots of people would have used the analogy of poacher turned gamekeeper when I jumped over the fence. So uh, the media has changed profoundly in that period of time. Uh, and while the principles are the same, the, the tools and the technology is just unrecognisable. You mentioned the word change there, Alan. Um, so how has your role changed from, from what it used to look like to what it looks like now? Can you give us a bit of an insight into that? Well, the first thing is I have been in Croke Park, I think, three times in 10 weeks. Uh, and that is very, very different because that's our base and that's where we're normally... We do a bit of travel, obviously, around Ireland mostly. Uh, we've been at home. So we've had to embrace technology. And we've used, um, we've used online technology like everybody else. I'd imagine half the world has. So every day we have a leadership call with the team um, in Croke Park. And then we, we would speak to individual members of my own team. I suppose the next biggest change has been the type of, the type of communications we've been engaged in. So we're a games organisation, but we don't have any games at the moment. So you can imagine that sort of challenges your very raison d'etre. Um, also, we've had to take on a whole new lexicon, so flattening the curve and all the rest of the terminologies that have become common in parlance uh, around this time. We've had to educate ourselves what that means. And then I suppose the, the last biggest change has been we've communicated directly with our clubs on, I'd imagine, eight or nine occasions since the start of March. We don't do that very often because we have a cascade system, if you like, in the GA that we go from national level to provincial to, to uh, county to club we bypassed that to go directly to club because of the importance of us having the right message, reaching the right people. And this wasn't regular communication. We were advising on very, very serious matters in relation to community health. And that had to be, that had to get to where it had to go very, very quickly. So it's been interesting. It's been different, but I'd like to think we've, we've put our best foot forward as an organization. And I'd also like to think within that, that effort that communications hasn't been found wanting either. And, you know, I'd have to laud all the volunteers around the country who have been incredible in, in their efforts, but also the team in Crow Park and our, and our team around the country at county level. I think everybody's pulled together and that's allowed us to get the messages where they have to go in a, in a timely and concise manner. Absolutely. Um, just River Vogel may arrive at an ogle of the Amir Kleintinye of the Sturmer Grenich Con, and Keshawani Aina Three Band, the Guelga Tushker, Guelga Orlifa, who. So, let them roll away all the Kvila her. I'm being desperate on on Tanga Usos. It's not going to be counted in a ruddy, it's far from being posted to Agum, Sinead Naga, will Deshagum and Guelga, Lert Kvila, Bisha Usa, the Gomer Majin. Uh, 
a more broad dumpster comparison to. August, you saw the make come in August is fair to So if you got Nagail again, new a win at Darbanum, Jamie O'Toom, August Tacony Air and Mock uh Sigil took a Rakarna couldn't me, August Ta on on over a Yen of a Geffrey Lawher, um or shock knee hill a yen of Kun and Gregg Korig, August is is one cluck a come a look class girl or Nihil Yen of Modulation Greg August Fathers Tom Mishy go over Barkin Crokey, Tommy Brass also more all fain uh a glockes of Frochation. Um, Alan, just moving on, as a player and as a supporter myself, I suppose, like yourself and everybody working in the organisation, we never could have imagined a summer without, a busy summer without games or training or any sort of GAA activity at all. As many other organisations have had to reinvent themselves, I'm just interested to hear how the GAA has, has gone about that. I suppose the first way that's manifested itself, Sinead, has been through the repurposing of our facilities. And I had the good privilege to be in Croke Park this week to see it firsthand again. And it's really stark when you see it, that it's been transformed in two ways into a testing centre for the HSE. Um, so the drive-through facility is under the tunnel of the Cusick stand. And you forget um, how, how you can multi-purpose or repurpose facilities like that, but that's just not a site that we're accustomed to seeing. And it's played its part uh, on the north side of Dublin providing a facility for people to go and get checked. And the second part is the handball centre has been repurposed as a, a testing centre for walk-in for people with appointments that don't drive. So that, that was a real source of pride. And I, I'd hasten to add, it hasn't just been Croke Park, but it's been lots of facilities around the country mm -hmm. um, that ha have shown great adaptability and flexibility. And a source of pride for me personally, Sinead, and it's really, I have to laud the operations team in Croke Park and, and Peter McKenna and his team I think it was in 48 hours they had come back after receiving a request from HSE saying that they, they would be able to do this and turn it around. And it's, it's been incredible, not just the GA, of course, but I'm really proud of the role that the organisation has played and stepped forward because we talk about the community and the GA a lot mm -hmm. this, during this crisis, and that's what, what it has been. We've been able to show it in a really tangible way. I suppose the second way has been the Community Call Initiative where we partnered with uh, partners in Musgrave through Centre and Super Value mm -hmm. to copper fasten a network of deliveries and supply network, if you like, for people uh, who might have been struggling or with mobility or who might have been cocooning and weren't able to go and do a regular shop. And even in my own club, I've seen the volunteers and up on the group every day, there's requests for assistance. I haven't been as involved in it as I'd like personally, but to see this happening, a survey we did, it was 84% of clubs have been active in this space. Lots of it's happened organically. It wasn't a case of Crow Park telling clubs, you've got to get up and do this. It was happening because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And I think it's been very, very, very well received. So those two things will probably be the things that stick out. And the final thing maybe has been um, our social media and our communications have been fantastic. And I'd have to mention Lisa Hayden and Neve Boyle off our team, but the, the role they've played in putting content out there for people to engage with. We've all had more time on our hands. We've all been looking for different distractions. And of course, GA people are great nostalgists. We love, or magpies, we love to see all success stories and all stories. All, all jerseys are coming yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> like, they're just three examples of how we've had to be nimble and adaptive. And I'd, I'd like to think, I'm not sure we'll ever go back to the way we were in terms of our working practices, but we definitely have found out a lot about ourselves and about the need uh, to step forward when challenges like this present themselves. And I, I definitely think we'll be better as a better as a nation and hopefully better as an organisation when we come out the far side of this. And we will come out the far side of this. Yeah. I'm sure you're aware of, of the different movements that are happening in other sports around, around the world at the minute. And we even we saw an announcement there during the week from the Premier League to say that they were kind of getting back to normal. Um, as a sports fan, and I'm sure you'll agree, that seeing progress like this is really exciting because it means that the world is working its way back to what would have been almost considered normal a few months ago. However, I do understand that that's slightly different for the GAA. Um, can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, and you're, you're dead right. I never thought I'd be as up on German soccer as I currently am, not since, not since spending a summer in Munich anyway. Um, yeah, I think there's lots of learnings to be had from other sports, but they come with a very big caveat in that we're amateur, an amateur sports organisation. So, while we can look at the protocols and the processes and all the other arrangements that have been put in place to allow sport to return, and isn't it incredible how far the Germans have been ahead of everybody? Like when you think how far they are ahead of, of English soccer, it's been remarkable. 
So lots of the protocols have been poured over and studied by our advisory group who've been appointed because they're medical experts. Like I often tell people, Sinead, we do games and culture, but we're not medical experts. So we have to lean on the advice of the people. And that's been our approach from the get-go. I suppose the big challenge for us is going to be um, when we do get back, both at club and inter-county level, I don't think the dynamic is any different. Okay, it might be easier to test players at club level, or at county level, excuse me, because there's less of them. But they all go back in the evening times to households and families, whether they're people with young families or they're living with older people or living with people who have underlying conditions. That poses a real, real challenge. And the GA president said on the Sunday game a few weeks ago, and, and I think most people will concur with him, until we've got some clarity around where contact sport lives in relation to social distancing, especially when it's at two metres, but not just two metres. That poses a challenge for not just the GA, but for everybody who's involved in sport. And I think that's another positive that's come out of this, that Irish sport has come together to, to try and facilitate this conversation. What does it look like? How, how does one practice social distancing? Okay, you can do it on the terraces or do it on the perimeter of a club pitch, no problem. But if you're a corner back and you're hanging out of a corner forward, for 65, 66 minutes, as you well know, Sinead. Yeah. <laughs> how, how does that manifest itself? And, you know, I think we are working towards a new normal, as I've mentioned already, and I think there will be an acceptable level of risk. But I think there are too many parts of this conversation and too many things floating in the air for us to be definitive about this now. And for the time being, we just have to follow the national roadmap. The GA have followed, or, or the, the government have laid down July the 20th as a day when we can, uh, we can come back as an organisation. I think we'll see small steps in in the direction of reopening clubs before that, but I, I think that, that will come in the days and weeks ahead. We get some clarity around that. But from from the get go, we follow the medics, we follow the national roadmap as laid out by the government, and I'd be very surprised if GA as an organisation doesn't continue to to take that approach. And not to put you on the spot, Alan, but there are medical there are medical professionals as part of that advisory group to ensure that that happens. Is that correct? Absolutely. Um, I'd name some of them. I hope I don't leave everybody off. But uh, <laughs> Dr. Kevin Moran, who will be a long-serving uh, uh, doctor with the Donegal team and who's with the International Rules team, who I met in Australia a number of years ago. Very, very experienced people. Uh, Dr. Pat O'Neill, former Dublin footballer and indeed manager. Uh, Mary Horgan is also on that uh, committee. Uh, and it's chaired by Shay Bannon, from, who's the chair of our Health and Safety Committee in Coke Park. Dick Clerken is also on that. Uh, Paul Flynn, the, the CEO of the, of the GPA. And I'm pleased to say that Camogie and Ladies Football, as, as the members of the wider GA family, are also. So I think we really have to bow to their superior knowledge. They will advise the GA's Krishna Bonish Diokta, which is our management committee, um, on, on the best course of action. But this will dovetail with the government's approach. Uh, you know, I don't think you'll see any organisation running off on a solo run on this. This is too serious. And our first responsibility here is the health and well-being of our players, our members, and indeed members of the, the wider community and society at large. There was some positive news, though, that came out yesterday that you guys have been working in the background to try and ensure some form of, of cool camps happen this summer. Can you give us any information on that? Yeah, it's pretty much dependent on the government moving to phase two. So there have been uh, Charlie Harrison and Shane Flanagan, who are from our games department, have worked day and night to try and see if they can reconfigure what the cool camps might look like if we were to get the green light. It's too early to go into specific detail on it, but needless to say, if it was to go ahead, it wouldn't look like the cool camps that we are all familiar with, unfortunately, because it's a fantastic initiative with 150,000 kids last year. Like it's, Pro rata, it's probably the most successful initiative of its kind anywhere. Um, but we hope if we get to phase two, Sinead, that we will be able to go into more detail on that. But it's it's simply too early. But I can people can rest assured that it, it ha we haven't just cranked into gear in the last two or three days. This has been part of the conversation since March. We looked at everything that we do and was there any possible way we could reconfigure how we go about doing it in very changed times and. The, the health and medical advice will determine whether or not any of these plans see the light of day, but they're very detailed and I think they're ambitious and realistic given a possible improvement in circumstances in the weeks ahead. I'm sure you'd make every mother and father's dreams come true if the cool camps were to go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think not just that, but I also, and I've got three kids under 10 myself, like I see how they miss their friends. I see yeah. how they miss, they, they've lost their liberty. I see how they miss school. I never thought I'd say that, but they do. 
And, you know, you, I, I think everybody has looked at the, the moon chari and the, the, the teachers, especially at primary level, but not just primary level, secondary too, in a very, very different light because homeschooling has been a challenge. And I think anything that we could do to bring back some form of normality for kids and their normal routine, and we've all done the Microsoft Teams training sessions, yeah. it's just not the same. It's a whole lot better than nothing. But uh, I think everybody longs for, for getting back to the things that we took for granted, and I don't think we'll ever take them for granted again. Yeah. Well, Alan, I think that is the end of our conversation. Thank you so much for, for speaking to me and to everyone listening in. Um, it's been a pleasure. It's nice to see you again. Alan and I used to work together quite regularly in a, in a past life. Um, but the best of luck with all your work going forward. And um, I suppose until the championship is on hold, we'll assume that Dublin will remain champions. <laughs> Well, we, we can do that by us, of course, Ned. But I'd like to thank you for your time as well. And I'll just to say to everybody in DCU, and DCU is uh, close to my heart after doing a master's there in journalism in 2000. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a place I, I, whose fortunes I follow closely still. And I'd like to think that everybody in DCU and indeed connected to DCU stays safe and comes out of this uh, at the other end uh, healthy and, and, uh, and looking forward to whatever, whatever the future holds for us all. Ramila Mahada. Uh, Falsch Rot. Slam.